Hello there guys, Francis Gray here and today we're going to be taking a generic statue of a male golfer and we're going to be changing it into everyone's favourite make of a mouth, Deadpool. Okay guys, so uh, I started off with a resin statue of a generic man playing golf which I found in a local uh, charity store and uh, when I looked at it I thought uh, that this might make a uh, really nice custom one day. So I decided to go with the uh, character Deadpool obviously because he's a quirky character and uh, he's really popular with the fan base. So the general idea is Deadpool is going to be in golfing clothes or golfing attire and he's going to be launching a pineapple grenade towards one of his victims or, uh, or a target. So I've got this little silver little uh, round piece that I think will work really well as a golfing tee and then that elevates the uh, the pineapple grenade up off the gr off the floor, and uh, I decided to title this one uh, Deadpool uh, Swing and a Miss. So the general idea is he's basically got dressed up, set up the grenade, pulled the pin out, lined a shot up, and then took a swing and missed. And uh, yeah, he's got like a second left before the grenade goes off, so he uh, <laughs> he'll probably uh, lose a couple of limbs. So I thought that was quite comical and it tells a story and it gets across the character's goofiness. So yeah, so uh, yeah, to start things off, uh, I think we need to get the Dremel out and smooth down the ears and some of the hair. Okay, so the reason why we are smoothing these parts down is basically with Deadpool wearing a mask the uh, these parts uh, get more, I suppose, flattened down and uh, they wouldn't be as um, prominent as, uh, as features go. So yeah, uh, trusty Dremel to the rescue and I'm uh, just smoothing down the top part of the hair, the back of the hair the sides of the ears. I don't want to grind the ears off completely because obviously you would have ears under the mask but uh, I just don't want it to be uh, as stuck out as it is so I'm just taking the edges off. So yeah so nice and dusty now so uh, makeup brush to the rescue I'm just giving it a good dust. Clean my workstation as I go. Okay, so for the next part, I am uh, using this stuff, which is Milliput, which is the standard version, which is a two-part uh, epoxy clay, which uh, you mix equal parts of A and B together, so it's uh, exactly the same. Uh, and then uh, mix it thoroughly and uh, apply it, sculpt it, however you like. And then uh, when you leave it in, it's uh, when you just leave it after a while, it'll uh, harden into the shape that you sculpted. And then uh, after that, you can sand it, drill it, do whatever you want with it, really. So uh, yes, uh, it's perfect clay to be uh, to use as a as a mask for Deadpool. So at this point I'm just taking my time and adding thin layers uh, all around the surfaces. Now I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to leave that little golfing uh, cap that uh, most golfers have to obviously block out sunlight from their eyes. And the reason why I wanted to do that is uh, we all know that Deadpool has a bit of a thing for uh, like Hello Kitty kind of items like backpacks and stuff. So I just thought how comical would it be if uh, if he's wearing these iconic colours of uh, you know red and black with uh, bits of white, and then he has a bright pink Hello Kitty uh, golfing hat as well. So 
Same again, just gets across the character's quirkiness, and you know, fans of the character will uh, see uh, see the the connection to the films and the comics. It works at so many levels. So yeah, at the uh, for the next part, now I was struggling to sculpt the back of uh, of Deadpool's mask while the the golf club was in the way. So I just basically got a pair of uh, pliers and uh, just. Uh, just yanked it out of the hand there and unfortunately it did break the, some of the fingers on his uh, right hand but uh, I kept the parts to one side and I can easily fix that later on with just uh, regular super glue and uh, more milly put to the rescue so yeah so uh, just taking me time and puncturing loads of little tiny little holes all around the mask just to basically mimic uh, like a texture uh, textile pattern and uh, yeah and I'm adding that little uh, part that he always seems to have on the back of his uh, on the back of his mask which is uh, this like little overhanging lip I suppose where the cloth doesn't fit sit flush so uh, it's it's iconic to the character so I had to I had to incorporate it in there So yeah, going in with a toothbrush there and a toothpick, basically just to give more uh, texture pattern. Okay, so for the next part, once that had hardened, I went in with a little bit more milliput, just to sculpt more to the the Hello Kitty uh, headband uh, for when we paint up later on. And I just mimic like uh, an, a stretchy elastic fabric with that. So just stands out from the mask and, you know, keeps it a little bit separate. Okay, so for the next part, more milli put, but this time I'm going around the uh, the arms and the hands, just to give a really thin skin layer, so uh, I can go in later with a toothbrush, and I can add like a same again like a stipple effect to the clay, and then that'll mimic uh, Deadpool's burnt skin, because obviously the character uh, undergone some experimentations and uh, yeah it left him basically scarred all over all over his body so yeah so I thought with him being playing golf the uh, I, I should keep these these parts uh, flesh so and also for mega fans uh, who know the character you know it'll be a nice little uh, little easter egg I suppose or a nice little connection to the character so yeah, so uh, just make, trying to make it as thin as possible and uh, yeah, just going in with a toothbrush now and then just adding a stipple effect, making sure to get into all the little nooks and crannies and around and about. And I let one hand, which was the left hand, dry first because uh, I didn't want to uh, go ahead and try and do the right hand at the same time and then accidentally, you know, move it and touch it and I've just destroyed that detail. So as you can see there, it's a time jump there and uh, yeah, so now on to the next hand. And uh, yeah, just using some water to um, thin the clay out as I go. And uh, Milliput works really well uh, with water, it really tends to uh, smooth everything down. So. Yeah, it's a good clay to use for that. So same again, just getting into all the little nooks and crannies, and uh, yeah, when I've done a full coat all the way around, just uh, go on in with the with the toothbrush, and then leave it to dry. Okay, so for the next part I went in with some regular matte grey primer just to give it a surface coat and uh, I'm going to go over it with uh, some white primer later on. The grey primer was just basically to 
go over the way we've sculpted the midi put just to blend it all together and just I can get like a visual look at it and uh, you know correct any errors or anything that doesn't look right it's easier to iron out these mistakes as early as possible because you don't want to find out that you know something doesn't look all that great or looks misshapen you know later on in the build and you have to basically start from uh, scratch again so yeah so uh, gluing the golf club back into place so uh, at this point I was was wondering uh, once you swung the uh, which which way will the uh, <laughs> will the uh, Will the golf club be pointing? And I, uh, I, I, my brain kicked into gear and I figured it out. And uh, yeah, just use some regular super glue, super glue the fingers back into place. And uh, yeah, and now tipping them upside down to make sure that uh, super glue can run up inside the uh, the where we glued the the shaft of the the golf club. And I'm also gluing the. Uh, the right hand's thumb in place because that broke off as well so it was a bit fiddly this part it just didn't seem to want to sit flush and uh, yeah it took me a while to get that right so for the next part I went in with a white prime and the reason why I went in with a white prime over a grey prime is basically I want to get some paint on the golf club so that'll be easy to paint later on and I also wanted to get a white layer on there because we're going to be adding some vibrant colours soon so white is always a better undertone for vibrant colours okay so here we are with its first cutting of white primer and uh, now that we've lightened everything up we can go in with some base colours so I'm starting with a medium acrylic red and uh, yeah, just uh, applying a base coat to the mask. Okay, so for the next part I'm going in with a humble number 61 which is a regular flesh colour and uh, I'm just giving a base coat of a regular flesh to, well, Deadpool's flesh parts so uh, <laughs> it's not exactly rocket science at this point but uh, yeah I wanted to make sure that his left hand um, the, retain the glove or the golfing glove at the top so uh, so I, I think I might paint that black later on to keep it in uh, connection with his colours but uh, for now we really need to get the uh, the flesh looking uh, good basically before we go ahead and uh, start applying more paint work in and around the area so yeah so just a base coat leave it to dry and uh, probably go in with another coat later on so for the next part I'm going in with a acrylic white now I know that we've already given it a base coat of white primer so it is already white but uh, yeah the acrylic just seems to dry that a little bit more vibrant and obviously we all know that uh, golfers seem to have very vibrant colours when playing golf I'm not really too sure why that is, I don't know if it's like the standout from the crowd. If you know, let me know in the description bar below because I would uh, love to know why. Did it start with a key player or uh, or is it just something that, you know, they all decided to do at the same point? So yeah, would be interested. <laughs> so uh, yeah, getting back to the build. For the uh, next part, I went in with uh, acrylic black and just uh, highlighted the soles of the shoes now i will go ahead and detail these more later on i add more like you know various like colors like the reds and the blacks and some parts whites etc same again just to get across the character's colors but uh, the bit the the soles of the shoes i knew was definitely going to be black so yeah so i just went ahead and uh, took me time and 
painted those. But uh, seeing as we've already got the black acrylic out, I decided to go ahead and paint the collar of, uh, of the golfing shirt. So I wanted to keep the golfing shirt red, because uh, obviously they're blue colours, but uh, I didn't want it to clash with the red of the mask, even though the mask's going to be a darker red. So, uh, so I decided to uh, basically make a, a separation point. So, yeah, just a black collar. Um, simple enough, but it does the trick. So, at this point, I decided to use the again black acrylic to paint the uh, the, the belt to the top of the trousers. But uh, yeah, I forgot to uh, <laughs> get the camcorder to a lower position to record that. So, yeah, apologies for that. Aww. But never mind, because we're on to painting the golfing shirt. So, it's the exact same acrylic medium red uh, that we used for the mask. But uh, I'll be darkening the mask down later, so there will be a difference between them. So, yeah, so it's just take me time getting to all the little uh, folds of the fabric. Uh, yeah, just take me time so I don't go over the, the area that we just painted the black. And then obviously, uh, same again, just take me time when I get to the, the arm areas so I don't paint over the, the flesh colour that we just applied. So, yeah, just give it a one coat and then left it to dry. And then once fully dry, I went over and give it another two coats after that. So I had to be quite careful at this point because I wanted to obviously paint the insides of the shirt the same red colour uh, but uh, I had to make sure that I didn't uh, overlap it and give it onto the flesh because that would probably be a bit of a pain in the butt to uh, to paint over that because the red would probably still keep creeping through the flesh colour I'd have to give it multiple coats which will bulk it up and it just wouldn't look right so yeah, so just had to take my time really, and then, uh, yeah, just give, give uh, this red shirt multiple layers. Okay, so at this point I'm going in with a medium green acrylic and I'm just watering it down a little bit and uh, applying it to the sculpted grass just so it gets into all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, so that for this point, I wanted to add some uh, makeshift buttons to the shirt, just to add, add a little bit more detail. These will get painted over black later on, so these are just uh, tiny little, uh, what you call demon art, uh, diamond art, sorry, beads, and uh, just to apply with a little bit of super glue beforehand, and then just go in with some tweezers, put it into place, leave it to dry, and then you can go over it with acrylic paint later on. Okay, so at this point I'm going in with a watered down black acrylic wash and uh, once applied it just gets into all the little uh, nooks and crannies that we sculpted earlier and uh, once you wipe off the excess with a dry or slightly damp uh, kitchen towel or kitchen roll, wherever you prefer, the uh, it just uh, adds a layer of depth to your piece. So, uh, so yeah, uh, never underestimate the power of a black wash. You only knew the power of the black wash. Okay, so at this point I'm just going in with regular black acrylic and I'm just painting uh, the golfing glove on the 
left hand making sure that I leave a space for where the detail of the knuckles are because quite a lot of these golfing gloves they always seem to expose a little bit more uh, where the knuckles are and the forefingers so yeah it was a bit tricky to get in there but a nice fine paintbrush is your best friend and yeah Bob's your uncle. Okay, so at this point I'm adding the black part to the mask, just uh, taking me time and making sure I don't accidentally uh, go over the white area because that would be a nightmare to lighten up if I uh, accidentally, you know, got black paint on that. So yeah, so same again, just take me time, nice fine brush, and you can't go wrong. Okay, so I decided to use the same black acrylic while it was out to give a base coat of black to the golf club. Uh, obviously, later on I'll be going over with a silver to add some highlights, but uh, the black just tends to bring out the silver better than uh, white does. So, yeah, it's always best to give it a, an undercoat of black first. Okay, so at this point I'm going in with a medium pink and I'm adding the, the Hello Kitty golfing visor as well. So I think once this is done, I'm giving a couple of uh, multiple layers, I think this will uh, look really comical and uh, I, think it'll, I think it'll just be funny. Okay, so for the next part I'm going in with what's titled a Fire Red, which is a tester pot. I believe it's from Wilco's or Wilkinson's in the UK. And uh, it's only about two shades lighter than the red I was already using, but it just stands out different from the mask. Because, uh, let's face it, if uh, Dev Pool had uh, acquired a golfing costume, uh, uh, at some point, I very much doubt it would be bang on the exact same red as the uh, as his costume. So just little little tiny little differences like that really add a story to uh, a piece or for a, a diorama. So yeah, it's always a good thing to just say to yourself like, what do you think the character did to get to this point? And uh, even if it's just subtle, it uh, it all adds to the overall mystique of the piece at the end. So here I'm using the same fire red that was from the tester pot and I'm just adding a or I'm painting the design that's all, that was already sculpted on the side of the golfing shoes. So same again just keeping it the same colours as the, what the character is known for. So at this point I'm going in with a dark brown acrylic and just basically just going around the bottom half of the base just to make it look like mud or mimic uh, earth. So this will get blended out later on because I do plan on adding this to a base but uh, for now I'm just going to give it an undercoat. And now I'm going to go in with a second coat of medium acrylic green just to give it another shade to the grass just to make it more vibrant. Okay, so at this point I've got a old base to a like a brass clock that uh, broke a few years ago and as you can see there it actually fits perfect for the uh, for the bottom of the statue base 
So it's rare when I use like this type of base, I usually tend to stick with uh, wood or resin, but uh, in this case I decided to get some uh, some really fine sandpaper and uh, basically sand uh, like a little top layer off I suppose, try and get it a little bit cleaner. And uh, yeah, and then uh, once that was nice and clean, I uh, took it out into the garage and uh, give it a couple of coats of a uh, black gloss. And once uh, once it had dried, I then give it a coat of uh, just normal gloss varnish over the top, and then left that to dry. And then once that drop was dry, then I just flipped it round uh, 180 degrees, and then just did the same process on the other side. And there you go guys, so uh, it's starting to take shape now. Now as you can see there, there's a little tiny gap between the bottom of the statue and the top of the base. So that'll need filling in. So I'm going to use this stuff which is uh, DAS air dryer modeling clay. And this is basically just to add a layer of bulk, um, which will basically just fatten out and smooth over that surface. And then in a couple of days time, once it's all fully dried, we can sculpt over that with something like Milliput or Aves Epoxy Modeling Clay. So yeah, so at the moment I'm just rolling it out with my fingers into these like little like, worm shapes I suppose, and then uh, then just fitting them in the circumference. And uh, just squashing down the statue and just cleaning up the excess modeling clay with a uh, sharp scalpel and uh, just basically make sure it's uh, definitely in there with a, with a sculpting tool right now and then uh, just wiping away the excess as you can see there the the statue is not stuck in place so it is moving around a little bit and as of the moment i'm adding the same fire red from the uh, wilco's tester pot and then just uh, sculpting some more detail on the uh, on the golfing shoes so it's the same image mirrored on both feet so you have to really make sure that you don't overlap otherwise it'll stand out like a sore thumb. Okay so for the next part I'm going in with these uh, little coaster pads that you you just basically just peel off and stick in place and uh, yeah just add in uh, six to the bottom and uh, that'll help elevate it up into place and I'd have to worry about the bottom part getting uh, scratched and just going in with a two part epoxy now which is uh, equal measures of A and B mixed thoroughly and uh, then just uh, put the statue back into place and then leave to dry and then uh, after a couple of hours it's rock solid Okay, so I decided to use three medium sized clamps basically just to hold it in place and uh, give it a few hours to dry. Okay, so now that we're cracking on with the base, I want to go ahead and I want to make a nameplate. So this is going to be a simple rectangular nameplate and it's basically just going to have the Deadpool logo or the nameplate of the logo. And uh, underneath, uh, in like a fancy text, it's going to say um, "A Swing and a Miss," which is obviously the title of the uh, of the statue. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm in matter control on my PC, and I'm basically just taking uh, two different rectangle shapes, one smaller than the other one. Uh, taking the second smaller one uh, a few millimeters up off the ground, and then deleting it from the first one, so it basically makes like a rectangle template with a border around the side so this is only a couple of millimeters tall then uh, yeah then just dragging and dropping the uh, the official Deadpool logo uh, I believe this is the logo from the films and uh, same again just applying it so it's the same depth uh, just a couple of millimeters and then it just fits nice and then uh, just uh, there's a bit of overhang there as you can see so I'm just correcting that and 
just uh, line it all up, make sure it's not overlapping, and then just drag it all and then combine it all together. As you can see, it's changed the different uh, colour. Let's just say it's all one piece now. And then uh, I'm just putting in the regular text, which is just a swing and a miss, and then I change the font into a more uh, funky, uh, you know, a little bit more like ooh la la kind of hushy poshy kind of, <laughs> you know, uh, text, which was, uh, I suppose, gets across like the game of golf, I suppose. Uh, it's uh, usually for the upper class. Okay, so on to 3D printing. So it's uh, been printed on uh, PLA filament on a uh, Flash Forge Creator uh, Pro, I think, I believe it is. And uh, yeah, I think it took just under two hours to print. Okay, so as you can see there guys, that uh, turned out really nice. Now there is a few different marks and uh, those are basically uh, where the, uh, there was a few little gaps in the, in the print so I just went in with some uh, wood filler and sanded it down, hence the marks. But uh, all's well that ends well. So yeah, so just grey primed it in the shed and uh, now I'm applying some uh, milliput around the sides of the, the connection between the original statue and then the, the black makeshift uh, brass base that we added and then this is basically this connection uh, is just basically going to be mimicked as mud just generic random soil under the grass and uh, I might I might add something something comical I might add like a couple of little worms or something like that just to get across the zaniness of the piece so at this point I uh, took the Deadpool nameplate out into the uh, into the shed and just give it a quick once over with some red spray paint that's gonna work as an undercoat so uh, so now that we've let that dry for the next stage I need to start making plans on adding it to the uh, the, the statue itself so just regular milli put uh, a little bit of it to the back I'm gonna stick it into place and then uh, that was a little bit too far down so I decided to take it off and move it a little bit further up but uh, yeah, we'll leave that to add in and then we can build up around it later on. Okay guys, so for the next part I decided to use that little bit of metal that, uh, that I had which is going to fashion as the golf and tee, as you can see there. So the reason why I decided to go with this is because it's got a wider base that's uh, more contact surface to glue it to the... Uh, the bobbly uh, resin base of the statue. So, uh, so while we're leaving that to dry, I decided to go in with some uh, dark brown acrylic and add a base coat of brown to uh, the soil. Okay, so now that that uh, piece of metal's glued in place, I'm going to go over with some regular standard milliput, and we're going to sculpt over the uh, the surface part and uh, mimic more grass. So this way, we'll only have like a, a stuck out piece, which will obviously be the golf and tee.
Okay, so for the next part I decided to go ahead and use some air drying DAS modelling clay and uh, just fashion it into the uh, little nooks and crannies of where the nameplate goes and then just uh, take my time and uh, make it nice and straight and then once dry it'll, uh, it'll fashion a nice nameplate. So at this point I decided to go in with just some basic acrylic silver and just add a simple highlight dry brush to the, uh, to the golfing club. Okay so for the next part I decided to use some w just regular white wood filler and I'm just uh, using a, a squared off tip on a scalpel just to basically get it on into any of the little uh, holes or nooks and crannies and uh, yeah then uh, just taking a, a bit of kitchen towel and just wiping away the excess and uh, leaving it to dry and then once dry after a light sand it, uh, it's all nice and straight and uh, yeah makes the nameplate look uh, a little bit more professional. So for the next part I decided to go in with a medium green acrylic paint and then just start laying some foundation colours to the uh, pineapple grenade. So for the next part I went in with just a basic acrylic black and I decided to repaint the the, ba the base and the uh, the outsides of the uh, nameplate logo. So at this point, I decided to go in with a red watercolor and basically add a layer of uh, red over the uh, flesh colours of the arms and the fingers. So that's basically once you wipe away the excess, the red just stays in amongst the fingers and the, the crevices like where he's bending his arms and stuff like that. And it also adds a more natural flesh tone colour rather than just having it uh, just basic flesh. So at this point I've just drilled a hole into the inside of where the T is going to go and then took uh, a couple of minutes to dust away all the uh, unwanted resin, and uh, yeah, and the and the grenade was given a, a simple pin uh, drilled into the bottom of it and glued. So uh, later on we can uh, glue that in position, and I don't have to worry about it uh, breaking off. So yeah, so at this point I'm just uh, dry brushing a lighter brown on the soil, and now I'm going in with a black acrylic watered down uh, wash. And uh, and I'm just going over the nameplate, and then and I'm going to wipe away the excess with a damp ki piece of kitchen towel. Now the reason why I do I've done this is basically the black gets into all the little nooks and crannies and really uh, highlights the 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 word and all the letters rather than just having it the same basic uh, color red, which tends to blend in to itself. So yeah, so this way, as you can see there, that uh, looks a lot more clearer now. So for the next part, I went in with the same acrylic red, and I just give a general dry brush, uh, just to ha just to basically highlight the letters again and bring it up one more step from the uh, from the black wash from the background. 
and uh, yeah uh, once that's dried we can start thinking about uh, painting the swing and a miss uh, letter in uh, vibrant gold So for the next part I went ahead and I 3D printed some uh, little Hello Kitty uh, face plates and then shrunk them right down to a size that I think would fit the uh, top of the uh, the golfing cap. So just a little tiny dab of super glue and then I just uh, stuck it in place and uh, left to dry and uh, I'm glad to say it uh, worked really well. So for the next part, now that the paint is dried, I'm going to go in with a gold highlighter pen and just gently uh, take my time to go over the surface area and just paint it, well just draw on gold and uh, it helps it stand out from the rest of the, the logo, worked really well. Okay, so for the next part I went in with a black watercolour and I went over the golfing shoes. Now, if memory serves me correctly, I think the it, unfortunately it reacted with the red paint. It uh, The red paint wasn't have fully cured right, or, or just wasn't cured in general. And with applying water and a kitchen towel, you can see there, I've just rubbed a lot of it off and unfortunately it mixed um, with the rest of the shoe so I had to repaint the same areas red again leave that to, to fully dry and uh, yeah try again uh, later on with the black watercolour okay so for the next part I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some of those comical worms in the soil uh, my first idea was to have them extruding out like 3D kind of uh, kind of a, a thing but uh, on second thoughts I thought with them being small and thin and flimsy whenever someone goes to move this model or handle it the chances are it will either be that they uh, break it off or they uh, accidentally like cut themselves depending on where I make it from like like say it was a bit of wire or something so uh, yeah I decided to just paint them on instead so uh, yeah this, this uh, 24 hours has passed so all the uh, paint is fully cured so I went back in with another black watercolour just to get into all the little nooks and crannies of the uh, golfing shoes and then gently wiped away the excess and then uh, I went in with a little bit of red just to add a little bit of a like a definition between the top of the Hello Kitty cap and the bottom of it. And then at that point I decided, what the hell, I might as well just go in <laughs> with the full uh, full red watercolour and then just wipe away the excess. It uh, just makes it blend a little bit more better rather than just adding a line. So yeah, I was well it ends well. So at this point I'm going in this time with a silver marker and I'm gently taking my time and painting on the, uh, the main buckle to Deadpool's golfing attire uh, belt. And uh, yeah, for the next part I'm going in with just regular PVA glue and just uh, smearing quite a bit of it on and then taking an old stipple brush that I didn't really uh, need or didn't really care for and uh, yeah just used it to mush all the PVA into all the little uh, bumps and lumps of the uh, resin grass and then gently take my time to get it all in and amongst the, uh, the golfing shoes but not actually you know going over the golfing shoes so uh, yeah just take my time make sure it's definitely all over so for the next part I'm gonna go in with a static grass applicator and I'm gonna apply some Static, static grass. 
So, the static grass applicator I'm going to be using today is from World War Scenics and it's a pro grass uh, detailer. Now, I'm not sponsored, I'm not affiliated or anything like that, I'm just basically showing you the uh, static grass applicator that I'm using today. So the reason why I decided to go for with this one is uh, the, the, basically the smaller, more detailed ends. So with this being uh, a smaller, uh, compacted model with the legs not being very far apart, I uh, decided to go in with uh, something that where I can get into all the little nooks and crannies and uh, generally make sure that there's a, a nice good scatter. So as you can see there, I've just swapped the different ends over and loaded some new grass just so I can get in amongst the, uh, the legs. So, uh, so yeah, so just apply it in uh, heavily, heavy doses, give it, uh, probably, I'd probably say leave it overnight actually, get let the glue really get into all the little blades of grass, and then, uh, yeah, the next day just use a makeup brush or something like that, and then just gently um, brush away the excess, and then it doesn't hurt to get a hairdryer on it as well after that, uh, or something like that, like, uh, like a lens cleaner. And uh, yeah, and just get all the little bits and bobs, all the little blades of grass gone. And uh, if you can, I'd uh, I would suggest to try and make yourself a little pile, and then uh, accumulate all the loose parts. Remove any excess that you know, like bit like white bits of uh, like fluff or anything that comes along uh, just naturally, or hairs or whatever. Just separate all that and then try and save as much of the uh, static grass as you can to use another day. So it's a little bit fiddly but uh, it is worth it in the long run. Okay so as you can see there that has done a lovely job so uh, yeah we'll go ahead and we'll leave that to dry and uh, for the next part I decided to go in with a slightly lighter brown and go over where I painted on the worms. Basically once I added the realistic grass I thought the worms just looked too comical and I know it's a comical piece but it just distracted away from the, the main figure itself so yeah unfortunately the, the worms didn't survive so <laughs> yeah just, just general went over them and just let the paint dry. So yeah, I added a bit of super glue and then applied the pineapple grenade in place, let that dry naturally. And then for the next part, I'm going in with a number one Ravel, which is a clear gloss varnish. And I'm just going ahead and I am painting the, the bottom of the base and the, uh, the black parts around the logo. Now, before I went ahead and did this, I had to make sure that there was no loose blade bits of grass that are gonna fall under the, uh, the, the clear varnish because good luck uh, removing that later on. So I, uh, I took a long time dusting and cleaning and hair drying and just generally got rid of any excess that I wasn't wanted. And then when I knew it was uh, good to go, I went ahead and gave it a clear coat. Okay, so I went ahead with more of the pink and I decided to go over the visor again because uh, at this point it was just uh, a lot shinier and uh, it, it just stood out and you know I, could, I know if it was shiny it would look more like it was made of plastic which would get across that was Hello Kitty so it was probably made for kids but uh, I don't know, it just looked too distracting from the rest of the, the mask and the figure itself so I thought I'd best repaint it just a normal dull matte and uh, make it mimic more cloth rather than plastic. Okay, so for the next part I went in with some black watercolour and I just added a watery, very watery black to uh, some of the nooks and crannies on the white trousers. Now you can use a, like a dark grey as well, or even a medium grey maybe, but I just find the best results with uh, a very watery black. 
So yeah, so just painting the inside of the pocket because obviously the, there won't be no light getting to that. So having that bright white doesn't make sense. And uh, yeah, just going into all the little uh, little folds of the fabric. And uh, yeah, just uh, take my time and clean up any unwanted uh, mess or any unwanted uh, parts that was too dark. And uh, yeah, just trial and error. So same same idea, uh, same watery black, just going into all the little uh, nooks and crannies and ruffles of the uh, red shirt. And same again, just keeping it watery so it soaks into the paint uh, of the red. And uh, yeah, just mopping up any excess as you go. Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm going to go in with the uh, same fiery red and I'm just adding a basic dry brush just to bring some of that vibrancy back. But uh, obviously making sure not to get, in, in, get any of it into the nooks and crannies because obviously we want those areas to still remain a lot darker in comparison. And I'm going back in with the silver nail polish at this point and I'm just adding a dry brush highlight to the golfing club just basically to make it look like it's been well used. Uh, for the next part I went in with a permanent black marker and then I took my time and wrote the name Wade on his, uh, on his shirt there. And uh, for the next part I made a little pull ring for the grenade. Because obviously, like I said at the beginning of the video, the idea is he pulls the pin out, throws the pin away, and then uh, lines up a shot and obviously he misses and, you know, the grenade's going to go off next to him. So I thought uh, just to put a little pin there and then just a little bit of uh, PVA glue and keep it in place. And then just a little top up um, dry brush with uh, another silver nail polish. And... Going back into the uh, Hello Kitty visor, now I, at this point I thought it was a bit too pink all around so I thought I would go ahead and paint the, uh, the, the front lisp or the front part of the hat white and then uh, the underside as well just to basically break the colour up and to give it a bit more detail. Okay guys, a few more touch-ups and I think he's ready.
Okay guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Me personally, I've had a blast making this and it's it's quite refreshing to just do something completely um, unorthodox or, or you know thinking out of the box so to speak rather than like uh, following a, like, you know, like, a, like a traditional model kit like you know A for B to C to you know a finished product. So yeah, so if you've enjoyed this one, please uh, smash that like button and share on Facebook and Twitter because it helps new people find the YouTube channel, which I'm always appreciative. Thank you for any help. If you have any comments, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future builds. So once again, I'm Francis Gray and this is Deadpool, a swing and a miss. I'll see you in the next one.